for those who may not know, I'm Mr. Oskino Vasquez, formerly a state property. You know, I was signed to Rockefeller August 21st, 1999. I was in two movies, State Property 1, State Property 2, I was D-Nice. Uh, you know what I mean? And uh, since then, you know, we did put out two uh, State Property albums on Rockefeller Records. But I put out 17 mixtapes, you know. So I've been popping for about 17 years straight. You know what I'm saying? I got the name Oskino, I think. I think it was a girl named Stink first ever called me that. I used to wear Moschino, I used to like hustle on 51st and Market. And all my money I used to go to some store called Vizuri's on South Street and just buy all the most expensive fucking clothes. Moschino was my my favorite like clothes I used to wear back then. You know, the pants was 500, 600, you know what I mean? So I used to wear it every day. So they started calling me Oskino, like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, get my name O, you know what I'm saying? They called me O, so you know what I mean? We don't make this juice, we just get to it. We don't make this juice, we just get to it. Let me get it out of God, cause a nigga tend to do it. We don't make this juice, we just get to it. They ain't wrong, all right, it's just a flip to it. We be driving this tomorrow, cause the beat moving. First of all, at least, nigga, that's the thing. I'm major, but I want to play. We was working fast food, I was trying to say it. Pops getting chickens, we was working pop up. Took you out of Wawa, put you in the house. It was rough growing up in Philly for me because uh, my parents was on drugs, you know what I'm saying? So then my grandmom had this thing against me, I don't know what it was. So it was like, I was in the streets, but I didn't feel like it was rough. Now, then in the moment it wasn't rough because I was just living, that's all I knew, but looking back on it, I know it was rough. But living in the moment, I felt, felt normal to me. I felt cool, I had friends. We all was going to jail, mostly all our moms got high, so it was like the normal shit. It's like a tight knit neighborhood. It's like 80% black, 20% Rican, or sometimes it'd be like 30% Rican. But you know, Puerto Ricans and blacks, I mean, low poverty. Everybody gets high. It looks real terrible. But my neighborhood, for some reason, is real tight knit. Everybody know each other since we was born. We don't kill each other around here. You know what I mean? But they, a lot of people around here took care of me as a kid growing up. Like, I, I slept in, like, like the young boy right there, man, man. His mom took me in, but he wasn't even born. I didn't know where to sleep at. His grandma took me in. Miss Brenda Murdoch took me in. Uh, Lump took me in. Get her on the tape. <laughs> I just said, I just said your name in it. That's the last, that's what I saw out. Who house I used to be breaking and going to sleep right here. Lump. <laughs> My mom had a boyfriend named Mr. Scotty. You know what I'm saying she met whatever. You know he was, a, you know he got high whatever. He was in prison a lot. You know regular old head from the neighborhood type nigga. But anyway, he used to take with me to shoplift and do crime. So when he used to take me, to, he took me to the market one day to steal like steaks and shit. You know what I'm saying? So he stole these steaks. We get away. We come home. He made me a steak with corn. Right? I never ate steak before. I ate this shit, dog, and I couldn't stop talking about this shit, man. I'm like, yo, nigga. After the steak was like a cheese steak, like a Chinese store cheese steak. After he made a fucking steak with corn, and that, that's my favorite food to this day. I was like sitting there cutting, and, 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 and I, it made me want a steak all the time, even though I couldn't afford it back then. I'm like, yo, I want, why the fuck did he give me that steak? On the application. The application. Come on, I can't get a job. Running Look. Está bien. Hey, man. Doing big things. Keep doing the fuck you do. I'm loving that shit. I ain't going nowhere. I'm loving that shit. You be the only nigga with 10 million right around here. Show him. The big ass cookout. Buy the fucking hood up, baby. Yo, you need to, yo, listen.
I'm gonna get one pair because you my young. Yo, tell your girl cut that shit off. She supposed to have me on. This one right here. Basketball was my thing. That was my thing. Basketball was my. That's why. That's that's all the fights I got into prison when I was young. It was all about basketball. At 18, I got shot nine times. That shit cut my basketball shit straight out. You know what I'm saying? Cause my elbow got shot off and shit. I'm going to North Philly, where the poppies let them rams go. Nobody got a pop, yo, like, where the fuck our dads go? When the mama love, but it's like she has some other plans, though. I'm now with no drawers running through the streets, commando. You shoot your mom in the face, paralyze your man, though. No matter what the circumstance, you never take the stand, though. Now you kill that for me, though. Do him in the band, so. Got his body a week later, like, where the fuck is he in hands, yo? Baby, you nigga, never been a coward. Dirty boy starving, still in kids, they clam chow. Well, the way I got the game and Beanie Siegel recording conversation was uh, unidentified flying object. He's <laughs> like, no, I can't, I can't give up my source. It's like the newspaper. Not the newspaper, but I can't give my source. So I can't give up my source with that. But trust me, it's a person that people will be surprised. That's all I'm going to say. Chillin', chillin', chillin'. Hey, Jo, what's up? Listen, listen. That's that guy. I've been on this nigga for ten years, right? That's that guy. Nigga never gave me a beat. I didn't even know he make beats. Somebody else gave me a beat. That's gonna be my fucking hit song, right? He made the beat. He ain't giving it to me though, so I ain't giving him no credit. Hey, hey, man. Hey, what you got going on, big bro? Friend, it was Denny trying to. Oh, I got this thing. Oh, my goodness. When I have to finish, I'm going to bring it around to you. Okay. Okay, right. I ain't going nowhere. Right. I don't know. I don't know where to find it. That's the party with that little nigga, man. Like, years, never knew who the fuck he's doing that. I just go. I need to go in the club. This is about like, 2003, 2002. Iced out, man. I'm just going to go. I always wrote raps. I remember I used to take uh, like Scarface and Archie Magnetic MCs and have a tape and play it and stop it and write down what they said until I wrote the whole rap. Then I would read it and learn it. And I learned they raps real fast. I used to do that as a kid all the time. Not knowing that I'm going to be a rapper later on in life. And then I remember I used to write my little raps, but I would never tell nobody. Because you got to remember this back when nobody in Philly was rapping. Nobody. Like, it was like nobody going to rap. Everybody rap was from New York. Like, you know what I'm saying? We had a couple, we had Tough Crew and uh, Schooly D. You know what I mean, but Fresh Prince, but I ain't really, you know, but they wasn't, I mean, they was older, so for me to write raps, then it was like, it was something that was in me, it had to be in me, but in, I was in, uh, got certified as an adult in 1995, was up house correction, got in a rumble, put in a hole, and I was in there for 30 days, and I started writing raps to kill time, and that shit started sounding all right, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, oh shit, I might do this shit, like, and I started doing it, and doing it, I was doing it on the low for about two years, the 97, I started telling people, like, I rap, and I started, they're like, you rap? They never heard me say it. So by the time I let people hear me rap in '97, I already was good. Cause I already was practicing for two years. You know what I'm saying? Plus, there wasn't no competition. Wasn't there? It was like five rappers. You know what I'm saying? But I think it was in me to be that because that's that's shit, that's what I'm good at. I Man, I just did I'm about to drop Appetizer Seven. That's my third CD in seven months. Niggas can't do that. You know what I'm saying? On the visit, I can't lie, I admit it, that shit hurt way more than prison. We had the same mother, her daughter, so why the fuck she treat me so different? Never complain once, besides who the fuck would listen? Start writing my thoughts on paper and became hot as hell's kitchen. I shot nine times when I was 18, bang. Locked up for homicide. It was like, fuck the world, fuck God, everything, you know what I'm saying? I just gave up, you know what I'm saying? My dick ain't work, my arm ain't work, so I, you know what I'm saying? I'm 18, I'm in jail for murder. I mean, so I was like, man, why the fuck my life got to be so fucked up? I'm just, I'm quitting. You know what I'm saying? I was really, very quit. I mean, but I got out of jail and I had a daughter. So that's the kind of the only thing that my daughter made me kind of want to, let me try for her a little bit. So I said, you know what, man? I'm about to try to rap. When I was 19, I decided I'm going to try to rap. I'm going to just say fuck bitches, fuck sticking up stores, fuck selling drugs. I'm going to be broke and I'm going to stay in the studio and get good as shit. And I, was, I stuck to that shit. And it took 24 months and I got a fucking record deal. And I, you know what I mean? With Rockefeller Records, so. <laughs> it's like a miracle type situation shit, you know what I'm saying? I remember some of the raps I spit when I rapped for Jay. One of the rap, well, cause I rapped for him for like an hour, man. But one of the raps I said, I was like, I had a rap that I, like if I was a car, I said, uh, mind you, this is 1999. I wrote it probably 1997. I said, I came down assembly line, they put me together. 
I was all black, factory rims and gray leather. I had four doors, so they called me sedan. Gas tasted good, and I cost a hundred grand. I think I cost too much, because nobody caught me. My best friend, 420 eyes, was real poppy. My name is Mercedes, but everybody called me six. 600 on my ass, V12 on my hip. I rode through the hood, I heard ooze and eyes. Met the sexy bitch five. She had cat eyes. My owner was an ugly nigga, I made him cute. Girls loved him, I was the sign he had loot. He said, fuck that, this summer I'm knocking him dead. He painted me red, put TVs in the back of my head. Put a CD in my mouth when I sing Jehovah. Every time I turned around, he was pulling us over. They was mad, I was so cute when he was the owner. Everything was going good for a while, we was rolling. Till one night, him and his wife had a bad fight. It had nothing to do with it, the shit was not right. She bust out my windows and flat my tires. Then I woke the fuck up before she set me on fire. F7, baby. The wait is over. Y'all know who really run this shit. Three CDs in eight months. Just that real talk. Oh, uh, talk to him, Mo. It was 92 Grammy night. I was looking through my granny drawers for a stock and I could make a mask to go and rob the corner store.